A very good evening, everyone. My name is Payal Hota, and I welcome you all to We Talk Do You, a show by Puberty to Menopause, a public health awareness initiative by Human Biological Institute. Human Biological Institute is a division of Indian Immunologicals Limited, IIL, which was established by the National Dairy Development Board, NDDB, in the year 1982 as its unit, and later registered as a company in the year 1999 with the name Indian Immunologicals Limited. Human Biologicals Institute was established in the year 1998 when the government of India requested IIL to produce a modern tissue culture anti-rabies vaccine to phase out the unsafe nerve tissue vaccine. The first manufacturing facility of HBI was established at Uti. The facility is one of its kind in India to have rolled out first viral cell culture rabies vaccine in the year 2000. Subsequently, Human Biologicals Institute launched other vaccines and currently we are the major player in human vaccines and leader in ARV segment with presence in around 50 countries. We have three state-of-the-art manufacturing facilities at Uti, Gachiboli and Karkapatla, also known as Genome Bank. Human Biologicals Institute has also forayed into the market of clinically proven wellness products and infertility range of hormones. Our vision is shaping global healthcare by spearheading the One Health Initiative. Our mission is to innovate, produce and market quality healthcare products and services to improve and extend lives. We believe in providing affordable products with high quality through continuous technical innovations to meet our customers' needs. We feel very proud uh, in sharing about our green initiative. As a market leader, we have taken a significant step to reduce the plastic burden by 160 tons per annum by introducing eco-friendly packs of our flagship brand up here. We as an organization truly believe in our corporate social responsibilities, either it's adoption of government schools where IIL is providing basic infrastructure facilities, including help in the midday meal program. As a result of IIL's intervention, the strength of the children in the doctorate school has doubled within a few years. Our association with NDDB through our gift milk program, over 2,500 school going children are benefited. And we are associated with FIAPO. Together, we are working towards a rabies free Thiruvananthapuram. There's a few information about Human Biological Institute. For more information, you can also log on to www.indiamin.com. Puberty to Menopause, P2M, is yet another public health awareness initiative by Human Biological Institute, where we try to bring you expert medical advice from the leading healthcare professionals of our country about various topics relating to women's health. Well, today, uh, in today's We Talk Do You, we are talking on a very interesting topic, preparing mind and body for infertility treatment. Well, uh, we must all know that infertility is becoming so common these days that uh, it's, it's reported that one in six couples in India suffering from infertility and there are around five lakh couples, Indian couples these days who are seeking for infertility treatment. Well, there is a lot of distress, depression and anxiety which accompanies the infertility treatment process. And you know, it becomes a vicious cycle because this negatively impacts body's physiology and the entire reproductive process, which actually causes more stress and more blockages. So this is the cycle continues. So it's very, very important that when a couple decides to go and, uh, you know, once they decide to consult an infertility specialist and actually try to see that, um, you know, they, uh, they, they look out to experience the joy of parenthood, it's very important that they take care of their mind and body before initiating the treatment. Well, 
uh, we have a very special guest with us today who uh, will be enlightening us about this very practical approach as she says and it's very very important for everyone to know about it i would uh, welcome dr jyoti kalikoti from asmund chatisgarh aditya hospital and it's a pleasure to have you ma'am in our show today uh, most welcome dr jyoti thank you thank you well for welcoming me and for giving me this opportunity to share my knowledge with the people who are really in need of some uh, work in the infertility and people who are really suffering from infertility you know so thank you for inviting me thank you so much dr jyoti for joining uh, and uh, i must say everyone uh, dr jyoti has been responsible for helping many many patient uh, across chatisgarh and even outside the state for experiencing the joy of parenthood and she is constantly trying uh, you know to to help the entire fraternity uh, with her expertise um, with this I and mean, we are going to have a wonderful discussion today uh, before we actually begin start uh, talking to dr jyoti i would request everyone who is watching our video live today uh, if you have any sort of questions if you uh, which you want dr jyoti to answer i would request you to please put it in the comment section Uh, I'm sure Dr. Kalikoti would like to answer them by end of this discussion. And uh, if you can be a bit specific, it will really help to uh, answer them very appropriately. Uh, and also, I would like to request that if you feel this particular topic and the discussion will help anyone, anybody of your, uh, you know, your friends, family, relative, please do share this link with them and uh, help them out. Uh, uh with this dr jyoti uh once again thank you for joining and uh the first thing that we would like to know from you is ma'am uh as we are talking about preparing a self or uh, actually for the couple uh preparing for the infertility treatment before jumping to uh, the treatment and the basic treatment uh, which are available can you please help us to know why there is so much of noise about infertility and why is it becoming so common these days actually government is so much uh, focusing on the reproductive health you know these days the reproductive health includes the health right from the birth of a girl of a girl child till the menopause you know so reproductive health is one of the is that age group which is a child bearing age group you know so reproductive age has many issues many medical issues which are related to reproductive age group so one of the very important um, part of reproductive health is the fertility related issues at this age at the age of reproductive uh, duration during the age of reproductive age infertility has come up as a very important only for last 15 20 years you know so in coming future also, like in your future the incidence might further rise also so if you'll see one should initially know what is the infertility basically yes uh, if you'll uh, if you'll go for the definition of infertility it's a kind of medical condition when a all is trying to conceive and within a duration of one year in spite of not using any contraceptive measures if they are not able to conceive we call such condition as infertility um there are so many causes for infertility if you'll see the incidence it is around 20% of the couple they are not getting natural conception you know we need to help them out in some or other way for the conception to become parent and to cherish that parenthood you know so infertility is rising very high the incidence is going very high and if you'll see for the uh, causes of infertility they are multifactorial reasons regarding the cause of infertility you know and uh, if i will see the causes if i'll categorize the causes for infertility broadly we categorize them into two factors like the factors which are related to the male factor are the responsible for the couple to be infertile or whether the female partner is responsible for infertility so broadly we categorize the causes into two categories the male factor and the female factor infertility and we have to see by doing so many investigation that whether this particular couple fall in which 
category whether it is coming in the category of male factor infertility or female factor or both the partners are responsible somewhere they are uh, contributing for the infertility or sometimes what happens we are not able to see any cause of infertility also you know there are so many things which are happening at the micro level which you are not able to elucidate just by doing investigation so basically we categorize people into four broad categories whether there is male factor female factor or both partner or sometimes there is unexplained infertility is there where we are not able by doing those investigation to like whether the male partner or female partner is responsible for infertility so uh, whenever a couple come to us for uh, taking advice or for consultation of infertility so we need to uh, counsel them we need to educate them that whether really they need treatment or not sometimes they are coming before a one year of their marital life you know so as they are not falling in the diagnosis of infertility we should counsel them we should reassure them basically we should reassure them that things are going to happen normally at least they should wait for two years because if you'll see almost 80 percent of couples get pregnant by the end of two years so at least we should counsel them that they should not jump for the treatment before two years of their marital life okay sometimes there are situation like if the wife's age or the female partner is having on the higher age group in that mm -hmm. condition okay they can ask for treatment after a year also but i think major should be given enough time mm -hmm. enough time should be given the couple that the pregnancy should occur spontaneously or there should be a natural conception to happen so reassurance counseling these are very important part that we should that part we should play it honestly for the patient participant that's great uh, uh, actually it's very well said uh, that there there's no uh, you know thing to worry uh, when a particular uh, couple is trying to conceive as you said Mm, if they fall into the younger age group, uh, probably within th uh, below thirty, so they, they should uh, they should not hurry and uh, start thinking about the treatment processes. Uh, but that actually helps when they come and discuss with the um, uh, with the doctor. So it's very very helpful that they come and uh, try talking uh, to the doctor and try to understand what is the course of action. Now talking about that particular topic, ma'am, um, we keep uh, hearing about other factors as well. Like you mentioned about checking the male and female factor, but there were some, you know, uh, articles were mentioned. And that I told you about the cause. Sorry to interrupt you. Yes, I have told you about the causes of infertility. Why the incidence is rising these days? You know, I think there are so many social factors also responsible for this hike in the incidence of uh, infertility. One of the very important factor is as the age of marriages are very going to a higher side. Even the girls are very um, uh, like they're very keen about their professional life also. So the age of marriage is going high. So they are left with very less fertile period or time in their life for uh, for uh, uh, prolonging their family you know, and to have kids. So that is very important category of people who are uh, coming in the age of 30s for the infertility treatment. Okay. Mm -hmm. Second very important is for the male factor. I would say stress is very important factor especially for the male factor infertility stress has come up with it as our lifestyle has changed so much so that uh, stress has come out and the stress is associated with so many oxidative uh, uh, chemicals are being released in our body that are hampering or they are negatively affecting the uh, quality of gametes the quality of sperms and the ova that is getting negatively affected by so many oxidative stress factors which are being released in our body so apart from this one very important other factor I would say is as our natural resources are getting polluted. There are so many micro things are available, are getting mingled in our natural resources like our water, air. It, actually, so much research is required for such thing also that how this micro changes in our environment, in our natural sources, they are hampering or they are negatively affecting the quality of gamut. That is very important for conception to happen basically. So I would say the social changes, the changes that is happening in the uh, in our society, like late marriages, very stressful work places. Okay, after uh, moreover, so many infections, PIDs rate, and uh, this change in the environment. This, these are the very important factors. And one more thing, uh, 
the as the cancer incidence also getting very high mm -hmm. there's so many uh, very young people who are losing their fertility because of those anti cancer treatment also that is also very important part uh, that has uh, should be focused upon you know so there are many factors which are adding upon that was not used to happen in the past you know so we need so what as we are advancing in our lifestyle we are not basically advancing basically we are uh, ruining our nature and our body also and that is coming in the form of infertility right uh, so now when we are talking about uh, absolute very very uh, point very well said ma'am that stress has become a very integral factor of this entire scenario talking about that uh, uh, when you find that uh, a particular couple really needs to need to initiate a particular treatment process and now talking about the treatment processes uh procedures there are multiple treatments uh, involved when when uh, someone is struggling with infertility there is ivf there is iui there is icsi so uh still there are you know a lot of still many people are not quite aware about the basic treatment procedures that are available and uh, they, they do have this misconception that infertility means ivf which is not the right everybody does uh, do not need to uh, be treated with that process so what what is your uh, uh, suggestion in this and what do you want to say uh, to our audience today about this basically uh, if the uh, couple is coming for the counseling or for some kind for consultation related to infertility first of all we should thoroughly investigate them that is very important part we should investigate them thoroughly and uh, as much as need is there sometimes we uh, ask them unnecessary investigations also so mm -hmm. we should uh, investigate them thoroughly whatever investigation is needed we need to categorize them and apart from this as per the category they fall but we need to uh, see basic the cause of infertility if you are able to identify the cause of infertility accordingly we should proceed for the treatment sometimes what what happens you know uh, if a couple is coming at the age of 40 suppose there are some situations where the ivf is the only option left you know but for younger couple which uh, who are having enough time we should always try for the uh, simpler modality of treatment which are available for the infertility that all depends upon the cause of infertility and the age group they fall into the city the couple fall into so these are two important factors which will decide what modality of treatment we will uh, will uh, ask for or will give option to the parent, to the couple like uh, if a couple is coming with unexplained infertility if they are at the younger age group we should always try with the simpler treatment the initial steps and i think 15 to 20% of couple by the end of one year they can get pregnant by the simpler treatment uh, mm -hmm. not all patients require ivf you know because ivf is not uh, result of ivf is also not very encouraging whatever book says it is hardly 33% is the uh, baby take home rate you know so it is like if a couple is undergoing ivf it doesn't mean that they will succeed in the first trial only okay so results are not very encouraging whatever modality of treatment will um, give them and if you'll ask me um, the treatment steps of treatment like what are the different steps of treatment or different modalities of treatment available for infertility first of all we should look for uh, is there any kind of uh, body and mind set, uh, setting is required before the treatment you know sometimes the uh, couple come uh, and uh, the wife is having higher weight side so they should before treatment only we should need to counsel them we should give them 3 to 6 month time uh to set their mind to set their body so that the results of infertility treatment could be better you know so uh, i think that is very important part before treatment uh, we should ask for some kind of relaxation uh, yoga techniques are there some courses relaxation courses are available they should look for some good um, they should go for uh, losing their weight if they are fall in the category of overweight they should undergo uh, some kind of musical courses you know their yoga therapies are there are so many varieties of therapies are there. sometimes you know some patient are lucky that they are getting conception with such kind of relaxation and yoga and 
even the lo losing weight can help some people you know so uh, we should rather than jumping on treatment if you are seeing that there is no cause for infertility such kind of couple should be always asked for uh, undergoing some kind of relaxation yoga therapies music therapies are there losing weight and having uh, and uh, getting food which are fertility enhancing food is also are uh, given in the books so they can they can try for such kind of non medicated management for infertility sometimes i really uh, god is great some people are getting benefited by such non medicated treatment also so there's uh, no harm in trying such things also absolutely absolutely people ask me for the treatment so if you will see the cause for infertility is like most of the common cause of infertility is anovulation there is no ovulation and pcod is the commonest cause of infertility what i see in my opd so for such patients i would say i uh, we can divide the treatment in three steps basically okay the first step of treatment is we are in the uh, we are inducing ovulation by simple drugs and we are asking them to have natural intercourse around the uh, time of ovulation so i will say this is the first step of treatment and it has a success rate of around 15% and that is good enough i think 15% is a good rate uh, we are not losing much of money we are not investing we are not uh, keeping anybody's life at risk also so uh, this is uh, the first step of treatment that can be uh, tried for 6 months to 1 year of time you know and many patients are getting pregnant just by this ovulation induction therapy but you need a very good usg facilities with you so many Uh, other um, uh, facets of treatment is required to be associated with this kind of treatment we need to have very good follicular study and we need to have some hormonal assessment is required but this is the minimum um, so this treatment can be done at a minimum cost with 15 to 20% success rate okay and if a couple is not able to conceive even after uh, good trial good number of trials i would say like 6 months to 1 year we can ask them to undergo ovulation induction along with uh, iui that is intrauterine insemination this iui is a again it is not very costly procedure and it has a success rate of around 14% only so for iui everything should be normal you know the tube should function normally the uterus should be normal sperm quality should be normal sometimes iui is also having we are preparing the sperm by different techniques okay so if even the sperm parameters are not so good there are so many beautiful techniques are available to fortify this kind of semen and IUI is also having a very good success at around 15%. So these again, how many cycles of IUI can be done? We can ask a person, a couple to undergo IUI for minimally six cycles. We can ask for. This is also not very costly treatment. Moreover, uh, it has uh, it it won't cause any kind of harm to the patient. Like we are not using very um, high fi hormonal injections for IUI. Very simple protocols are being used for IUI. and if after this one and a half to two years of treatment if the couple is not able to conceive then we should proceed for uh, ivf okay ivf is having various techniques of iuf are available it's costly again i would say our what our textbook says the 33% is the around 30 to 40% is the success rate of iuf so but it should come at the last because it's a costly one and uh, and it's not available everywhere also okay. so so like you said uh, dr jyoti that uh, there are many alternative therapies before actually the infertility treatment is starting so it's very important uh, like you were coming to that is uh, it's very important for the couple to have a healthy mind and body yes and and it's more even more important uh, even after even even when they decide okay this is the treatment procedure they have to start with it's very uh, necessary that they should follow certain very uh, basic steps so some of uh, some of them that you have already mentioned why not try for yoga therapy why not try for music therapy losing some weight so can you please uh, shed some more light in this particular uh, area why is it so important to have a, a healthy physical and uh, very healthy mind and body okay uh, i think if a couple is preparing if a couple is Uh, wishing to come for counseling okay uh, before coming to counseling also they should undergo some kind of educational programs or they should they can use internet also and they should enhance their knowledge regarding the cause for infertility 
okay so before coming to institute or before coming to a doctor they should be aware of the factors responsible for infertility so it is very easy for us to counsel such kind of couple you know so they can enhance their knowledge in the field of infertility before coming to the hospital only and once they come to the hospital it's our responsibility to see the bmi of the patient to see their educational status which can like how much educated they are and as per the education level it is our duty to mingle with every uh, people whether they are highly educated or whether they are coming from the rural area you know so it is our res- responsibility to tell them how the fertility happens how the fertilization happens how the pregnancy grows what are the factors responsible for that. so it is the counseling session of patient with the doctor is very important and sometimes when a one you counsel them mm-hmm. they are ready to see for some more time they are ready to wait for some more six months or one year of time so counseling is very important and uh, so education is one one of the most important part preparation educationally they need to be they need to prepare we need to prepare them and they also need to undergo educational courses or they can get the knowledge through internet also so that they will whenever they will undergo treatment they will be able to understand what is going to happen with them what we are doing with them okay so it is the, the responsibility of the treating doctor also and the couple also that they should know the physiology like what is going to happen with them what kind of treatment we are offering to them so, so first of all is the education they should be uh, have a thorough knowledge regarding the infertility and their treatment second part is i would say is the uh they should take at least 3 to 6 months is required to prepare them um, mentally and physically to undergo treatment if a couple is coming with you and if you are seeing them they are of high bmi you know the weight parameter is very important for both partner the not only the female partner even the male partner's weight is very important you know because these factors will affect the hormonal milieu inside our body and that will affect the quality of gametes if they are falling in the category of overweight or if their bmi is more than 30 they come in the category of obesity so obesity and overweight is very important factor these days especially in case of pos and also in case of male factor infertility where some uh, uh, the quality of sperm is not so good so before jumping into treatment they should undergo result of treatment is better for those couples which come under in the normal weight bmi category so weight loss is very important factor for them then third is again i had said stress is one of the very important factor for infertility so if they are able to diagnose what is the cause of their infertility first of all which they should try to uh, remove themselves from those stressful situations work places they should try if it's possible for them to get rid of the stress stress factor they should uh, they can make their life better by getting rid of those stress factors okay apart from this to reduce the stress and to reduce the oxidative stress chemicals in our body they can undergo so many therapies are there you know yoga is one of the very important therapy music therapy i had told you so many relaxation uh, therapies are available on net also for uh, couples who want to undergo treatment and before treatment they can reduce their stress level and they can come for the treatment of infertility so results will be very much changed if we are um, if we are able to reduce their stress level and uh, fourth thing is i will say about the diet mm-hmm. they should try to uh, remove those things like high uh, carbohydrate diets junk food and so whatever we are taking these days you know they should try to remove all those things and try to take those fertility enhancing uh, food like the taking high protein taking fruits vegetables especially you know pineapple pineapple is supposed to be one of the very good fertility enhancing drugs and these has become the symbol of sympathy for infertile mm-hmm. couple you know so 
they should try taking those healthy food they should include these things in their food so that body will sometimes these things will work automatically you know without treatment some people are able to conceive so i would say they should opt for and these things won't require much of uh, money in time you know and it will change not it will help them not only reducing stress getting pregnant it is helpful in so many other ways you know it will change their life in so many positive way so right. i think um uh, this things can be tried before jumping into treatment thank you so much dr jyoti i'm sure uh, it will benefit many uh, who will be watching this video thank you so much and uh, we actually uh, are getting some questions uh, the, the first question that uh, we were getting uh, we, we got that uh, can can you please mention some fertility enhancing foods which a women can take before the procedure starts so you have already mentioned one very important uh, food that is pineapple pineapple uh, avocado is there all uh, like salads are very good food which are rich in protein we should avoid high complex carbohydrates should be avoided in our food junk food should be avoided and one very important thing i forgot you know uh, alcohol and cigarette smoke these are very two important things one like though it's not very common in our society but these is you know um, for all our world as a consumption of alcohol is getting high in female partners also so it is helpful for both the partners if they can avoid taking alcohol and cigarettes before treat before starting the treatment and for in every way it is good to avoid such kind of things correct i think that answers question of mr rajesh he has mentioned uh, good evening doctor what are the health precautions we should take so that is something that ma'am had just mentioned that uh, we should avoid smoking and uh, drinking if we are yes thank you thank you dr jyoti uh, that's another question uh, like there is pregnancy diet plan is there fertility health checkup plan i, I think she wants to uh, ask whether there is a specific pregnancy diet plan part of fertility health checkup okay we can uh, we can take the opinion from dietitian also you know it's a multifactorial uh, there are multiple people involved in the treatment of infertility you know we need andrologist we need uh, radiologist in that way if a person is underweight undernourished and even it is overweight in both the situations they can take their diet plan you know and it is better if we'll take the opinion from the dietitian that would be much helpful you know so they are they have their own knowledge regarding the field of diet but definitely uh, high protein diet has always a very good role and all those uh, food which is having high level of vitamins and when and uh, minerals so especially vegetables salads fruits these are very important thing to be included in our diet and Thank moreover uh, we need to take folic acid supplementation before planning pregnancy and this is very important uh, drug and it prevents uh, it prevents congenital malformation in the baby so this is it is called engagement pill after engagement only people are starting folic acid supplementation so that can be started before planning pregnancy and a good diet plan can be prepared by the dietitian so we can take the help of dietitian also in that case and especially for weight reduction they are really they are like god for us you know uh, if you are following their um, guidelines their diet people are reducing weight in a very short period of time so i had seen people transforming you know under yeah. the guidance of dietitians so many of these patients are getting uh pregnant spontaneously without our treatment just by losing weight so that is uh, i think we can take the help of whoever can help us in the other field of like in other facets of infertility correct ma'am very well said uh, so somebody uh, mr mani is asking what is the role of family members when a couple is coming for it's infertility very important you know he had picked up the most important point you know <laughs> whenever like we all know infertility treatment of infertility is not a treatment up, uh, for a day or two you know this takes lot like many months even many years to make a patient pregnant you know so uh, it's a this treatment it's a prolonged treatment with uh, 
around 30% results. If you we'll, in total, we'll say it is uh, coming out with 30% results. So many a times what happens, you know, if the patient is coming hospital, they have to come minimally five to six times. And even if during the IVF cycle, they have to come almost for 40 days to the hospital, almost every day. So it is the role of the family members to encourage them rather than let pulling them, you know. So many times what happens, it is a family member which are causing stress to the patient. So at least family members should understand the couple who is undergoing this treatment who are infertile. We should have a lot of empathy for them, you know. So yeah. that should come from the family members only. So if a patient is coming for such a long treatment, she is so many mentally traumatized, you know. So we should always cooperate with them. We should reassure them. And it is the responsibility of family members also. Whenever they are coming, they should uh, understand that why the uh, person is coming so frequently to the infertility clinics. So uh, this treatment is very long treatment. And sometimes the results are not very good. So, you know, we need to prepare the patient for those negative results also. So preparing the patient for those negative results is so important because uh, there should be hope also and they should be prepared mentally for negative outcome also. It's like very difficult to, uh, once the results are coming negative, it is very difficult to tackle them. You know, it is very difficult to counsel them in such situations. Mm -hmm. So it's a kind of thing where we need to reassure them and apart from that, we need to prepare them mentally for the negative outcome. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we are very in dilemma. Sometimes we are very uh, badly stuck how to explain them. Even after doing IVF, you are not able to succeed many a times. So in such situations, it's very difficult to counsel the patient party. You know? And Thank we are you. also getting emotionally involved with so many yes. patients. So their results affect our health also in many ways. <laughs> That's that's great. So that that shows how compassionately you you uh, talk and deal with your patient, and I'm sure they'll be lucky to have you, uh, ma'am. Uh, we we are having one question from Devendra uh, in the message box. That uh, uh, does any supplementation help, like coenzyme, uh, and uh, he's mentioned about DHEA. Does does it help any way in infertility uh, before before starting any treatment process? DHA is required for the um, development of fetus only, brain, okay? And it's all being supplemented through mother's blood only. So taking DHA, moreover, DHA is a, basically, it's a, it's a PUFA, basically. It's a polyunsaturated patty. So it is always good to take PUFA. In so many other ways also, it is being used in so many other modal, other medical conditions also we are using PUFA, you know? So taking DHA is good. They can take, and it will not just help to the coming fetus it will be very helpful for the uh, women also so dha folic acid good vitamins can supplements can be taken like money can be spent on taking some good antioxidants and taking good vitamins because sometimes our food is not uh, good uh, is, is not storing those vitamins so they can take it's good only it will never harm them Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Jyoti, for answering all the questions. So, and I really uh, thank everyone who has, who uh, were with us today, who joined us live and tuned in till the end. And uh, uh, I'm sure all your questions were answered by Dr. Jyoti. Uh, but uh, still, if you have some more questions uh, and, and uh, you know, forthcoming, if you, if you want to know something more from Dr. Jyoti Kalikuti, you can Please write to us. We'll ensure that all your answers and queries are, all your questions are, are, are answered. Um, and also, I would request if you if you want to know uh, more about any other topic, any particular suggestion that you want to give us, you can please write to us in www.vbt2menopause.com. Uh, we'll try to ensure that uh, you know we organize uh, a such program for you on that particular topic. Uh, with this, I really thank Dr. Jyoti Kalikoti from the entire team uh, for your time and for your patience uh, and for telling us such wonderful uh, and very basic things that will surely, surely help anybody who will be watching this video. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Jyoti. And it's uh, my pleasure to be here with you people, you know, and interacting with so many uh, needy people. So I'm really thankful to you people for inviting me. Thank you so much, Dr. Jyoti, and uh, have a great evening, ma'am, and take care, yours. take care of yourself. Thank you so much. And uh, I also thank everyone who joined us, uh, joined us 
uh, today and uh, uh, I wish you all good health and uh, take care of yourself till we meet uh, with the next We Talk Do You series. Goodbye and thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Jyoti.